my name is Jorge Mendoza. Um, I'm a PhD student at the Norwegian University of Science and Technology. And I will present this uh, case study I'm developing together with my supervisor, Jochen Keller, named Three Space Design of an Offshore Wind Turbine Support Structure Using Value of Information. Uh, this is the agenda we're going to go through. I will first talk about the context of the case study, the philosophy, the philosophy we uh, are following, and the goals we want to achieve. After that, we will talk about the methodology and how to implement uh, influence diagram to assess uh, the value of information. Um, in the third point, we will talk about the value of structural health monitoring information and also being a bit redundant about the value of the value of information already at the design uh, phase of a structure and from the point of view of the owner and the concessioner. And we will uh, finish the presentation uh, with some open questions and discussion. So uh, the aim of this case study is to show uh, how value of information analysis can be already used uh, to enhance decisions already at the design uh, stage. And for that, we uh, chose uh, to regard the uh, design of a monopile uh, support structure to support an offshore wind turbine. Uh, for those that are not familiar with offshore wind energy, I will uh, spend some uh, slides explaining the background of the case study. I guess that's uh, needed for those that are not familiar. So uh, in order to design a monopile, we want to uh, half the first natural frequency of the design uh, in between the 1p and 3p excitation regions. And I will talk a bit more about that. But uh, due to large uncertainty, especially in the soil structure interaction, this uh, estimation of the first natural frequency uh, can only be done to a certain uh, degree of uh, confidence. Um, on the left uh, figure, we can see a typical uh, relation between the rotor speed and the wind speed for a pitch uh, control uh, turbine. And on the right figure, we see a couple diagram that relates the frequency of the structure for each uh, rotor speed and also the uh, first natural frequency in this, uh, in this uh, uh, bluish line. So, um, uh, regarding 3P and 1P uh, excitations, which are uh, due to the blade passing, uh, one blade passing, and for a three blade the turbine, uh, every blade passing uh, generates an excitation that we need to avoid uh, from a dynamic point of view to, uh, in order to avoid the uh, resonance. Um, we are left with three regions, the so-called uh, soft-soft regions, uh, soft-stiff and stiff-stiff. Mm -hmm. Uh, design in the soft soft region are not uh, feasible among other reasons uh, due to excessive uh, flexibility of the compliant tower. Uh, the designs in the stiff stiff region are not cost effective uh, due to excessive use, uh, excessive um, uh, over design uh, from uh, other uh, limit states uh, point of view. So we are left <coughs> with the soft stiff uh, region. That for increasing rotor diameter becomes narrower and narrower and uh, there is uh, really not a uh, large margin in which we can uh, design the structure to be in. So, an example, a uh, Siemens 3.6 megawatt turbine. Uh, if we consider the minimum rotor speed and the nominal rotor speed, we are left with a soft uh, stiff region of 0 0.21 hertz and 0 0.25 hertz. If we would design a structure to have a uh, natural frequency right in the middle, we would be left with uh, less than 10% margin. Uh, the American Society of Civil Engineering recommends 10% for onshore-based uh, uh, turbines. Uh, offshore, of course, we expect to find uh, even higher uncertainties, and therefore we need to understand better what are the consequences of uh, this uncertainty. We cannot just be left with a deterministic margin. Uh, so this is our probabilistic decision scenario. We have uncertainty in the design performance and we need to manage that uncertainty. The typical ways to overcome uncertainty in the design phase are either by investing in a more robust design uh, that is over 
engineering the solution, or invest in, in information acquisition that can reduce the uncertainty already at the design phase. Both strategies can be used to reduce epistemic uncertainties and uh, uh, increase the reliability. Uh, in this case study, we want to do a value information analysis that uh, gives us a trade-off between both uh, strategies and let us uh, assess which one is uh, more cost-effective and uh, yields a lower risk. This is the most famous uh, value information scheme uh, that's in the last uh, workshop we summarized uh, into this table, uh, what least the decision scenario was summarized. So in this case, uh, the decision maker is the developer of the offshore wind farm. We are uh, in the design phase, or the decision point in time is design. And we want to design to optimize throughout the lifetime of the structure. In this case, I just uh, mentioned design and operation phase. And the objectives are to minimize the cost and risk and to maximize the revenue. An option energy is crucial uh, to optimize uh, or to maximize profit to uh, minimize the levelized cost of energy. Uh, the remedial actions we have are to uh, modify design or to modify the operation range and the information acquirement strategies that we have at hand. In this case, they consider, of course, to do nothing or to further test the soil or to perform an output only analysis in a nearby already installed monopile foundation that we can use to uh, assess the uh, real uh, or, or to reassess the uncertainty at a near location. Uh, monopiles are designed usually and grouped into clusters with similar uh, soil characteristic and similar uh, uh, dimensions and heights and water depths. So in, within a cluster, we can use uh, information to lower or to extrapolate uh, information. Uh, the methodology applied, we are using Bayesian networks. Uh, and here I will uh, describe the main features or the main uh, characteristic of an influence diagram that we can use to map or to represent decision as scenario. Uh, for those that are not familiar, these are the uh, typical components. We have chance nodes to represent our discrete random variables. We have the choice nodes that are our decisions. We have the consequence nodes in which uh, we can uh, assess the utility and, uh, and uh, to uh, decide for the better, the better uh, strategies. And we have uh, the arcs which are direct, uh, uh, implied direct probabilistic uh, dependency. This is the uh, influence diagram of the uh, case study. So in the color scheme we have in yellow the um, nodes uh, related to design. So we have a set of designs that we want to assess. The, uh, each design have associated uh, stiffness, which is in this case a random variable, and uh, this a cost. Uh, on brown, we have the soil uh, nodes. Uh, we have the initial soil parameters that we can only uh, assess uh, in a very um, brusque way, not uh, with uh, low um, fidelity. Um, and then during the life of the structure, there will be phenomena that will uh, modify those uh, Parameters. So there will be soil softening and stiffening, there will be scour uh, development, and as you can see, those uh, nodes are related to the stochastic and uh, wind and wave uh, uh, nodes in blue. We have in green the soil testing that we can either perform or not, and a cost associated with it. And together, uh, the design and the soil structure interaction will let us assess, in a probabilistic way, the first uh, natural frequency. Uh, on the left part of the influence diagram, we have uh, in blue the uh, nodes related to operation. So we have, the, for example, the cutout wind as a decision variable, uh, decision node, and uh, an energy production as a consequence uh, node. Um, the first natural frequency and the operation uh, chosen 
uh, let us assess uh, limit state, in this case adverse state of uh, the resonance hazard. And this resonance hazard, together with the stochastic environment, let us assess the uh, reduction in the fatigue life. That is what, in the end, causes uh, the consequences that we want to uh, minimize. Um, so, this is an example, for example, in the natural frequency estimation, we will have a probability conditional on the design uh, we choose, on the uh, estimation of the soil parameters, and on the selection of the uh, testing alternative. Uh, the discretization of this uh, uh, um, cumulative uh, distribution will be uh, given the conditional probability table that uh, are going to be used in the inference diagram. <coughs> and it's very important to notice this uh, conditional dependency. Because in the end, this will give us the value of uh, the structural health monitoring. In the end, we want to have something as simple as that. We want to have a probability based or conditional to design soil and test. Uh, performed, and we want to uh, estimate the reduction of fatigue life, and with that uh, assess the best design strategy. So a trade-off between design and uh, information acquisition uh, based uh, reduction of uncertainty. Uh, so what is the value of, the value of information? Um, we can map the complex interdependencies, and this is uh, very important. We can see the different uh, uh, variables that affect our decision uh, scenario and trace how uh, variations in, in, in the nodes will affect uh, uh, our decision. So this is also related to the sensitivity of the input variation and the uncertainty modeling. And also, in a Bayesian uh, belief network, we, can, uh, we are able to assess how the system responds to evidence. So, um, that was my presentation. Uh, please look at the fact sheet for more uh, information. I left here the link. It will be updated, uh, hopefully, frequently. And if you have any questions, it's now the moment. Thank you very much. The related uncertainties to uncertainties when you, you have consequences, yeah? Mm -hmm. So you have costs related to consequences, energy losses. So I don't know, you you, you have a package of, of costs, yeah? Yep. Which here I cannot, I mean, what are the related uncertainties if you assess consequences for your case studies? Yeah, it's a difficult, difficult and good question. Um, Maybe this is an issue for later. It's probably, uh, of course, going to be. Uh, if we use a uh, linear uh, utility relation, we are only looking at the uh, expected value of the consequences, of course. But uh, it's, of course, going to be a more complex uh, scenario. And in here, we have costs associated <coughs> to or <coughs> to the benefit to the revenue in the energy production. We have costs of the test. We have costs of the design. And we have uh, consequences uh, of the reduction of fatigue. <laughs> so it's uh, going to be def definitely a major uh, part of the development of this case study. Yes. I understand the case study is not 100% uh, uh, related to the interest uh, of uh, Brisa. But uh, I hope at least it's a uh, good pedag uh, pedagogic uh, case study for understanding how the value of information analysis can also be used already at the design phase 
to a better rational uh, decision making. Well, thank you. Uh, one challenge uh, is uh, <clears throat> which, which we are dealing with and uh, which is always an issue when we are trying to, uh, to model uh, how uh, new information uh, can be related to uh, a benefit at some sort of time scale for the decision maker. That is to define what is actually, uh, let's say, the packets of information which we can collect. So there are so many different things which can be observed, all the different indicators, but how do we define in a, in a stringent uh, and consistent manner the packets of information uh, which will facilitate that we can make a decision on whether we want one package or two packages or three packages because they they cost money. Every package of information costs money. And also the dependency uh, between the information contained in the different packages uh, is something that we of course uh, have to account for uh, because if that information is, is uh, fully dependent or just strongly dependent, uh, we don't have any benefit from buying more than one package. So these are uh, surely some of the issues which you guys have been fighting with in this application also. But thank you very much for your presentation. Um, and I think we should give you a hand again.